Today I'm going to show you an incredibly simple tutorial for making this delicate daisy bracelet. You will need a piece of nylon thread for this project. The one I'm using has a diameter of 0.2 mm. Uh, we will also use four colors of beads. These are Toho round beads size 110. You can see the color codes on the screen. A full list uh, of materials is of course also in the video description. I'll be using a simple magnetic clasp. You can choose between split rings or jump rings depending on your preference. I'll be using split rings. You also need two wire guardians, two crimp beads, two crimp bead covers, some flip nose pliers and possibly round nose pliers as well. Scissors, crimping pliers, uh, but if you don't have those, it's okay, you can use regular pliers instead. And since I'm using split rings, I'll be using split ring pliers. If you have it, it's nice to use a bead mat to prevent the beads from rolling away. So let's get started. I'll cut a piece of nylon thread. For the bracelet uh, I'll need about 150 centimeters. Now I will take a wire guardian and thread it through one hole. And then back through the other hole. I will align both ends of the thread uh, together because I want both sides to be equally long and move the wire guardian to the center of the thread. I'll take the pliers and give it a little squeeze. Now I will thread a crimp bead onto both uh, threads at once and pull it down. I will crimp it with the crimping pliers. If you don't have those, just press the bead with a regular pliers. This will ensure that the thread doesn't move uh, and the crimp bead holds it in place. To make it look better, I will cover it with a crimp cover and press it. If it doesn't turn out perfectly the first time, that's okay, you can shape it further. I will open the split ring. By the way, if you don't want to use split rings because they are difficult to work with, I recommend trying these pliers, they are absolutely divine. They are designed for fishermen and were really cheap and work great. Ever since I got them, I don't avoid split rings anymore. I've tried several types of pliers, all of which were pretty useless, uh, but these work wonderfully. I will insert the wire guardian like this. I won't be adding the magnetic clasp just yet, I will leave it like this for now. Since I want you to see everything clearly, I've taken a bead loom. I will place the ring on the rod and secure it. I'm doing this just so you can see it well in the video. To prevent it from moving side to side, I will also secure it with this uh, tag from Pret, just so you know, so you don't think I have some nasty gum stuck there. I'll join uh, both ends together and thread on one bash bead. And like this, I'll move it to the beginning. I'll take both threads and on each thread uh, I will thread two bash beads. I'll join both threads together. On both threads at the same time I will thread one rose gold bead. And pull it down. Now I need to make two loops here. So I will make some space. Here you see that the threads have naturally crossed. The thread that was on the left uh, now goes to the right and the one that was on the right uh, now goes to the left. I won't prevent this. I will take the rose gold bead and move it up like this. Two loops will form here. Uh, normally I make them smaller but for clarity I've exaggerated a bit. I will take the thread on the right and thread it from top to bottom through the two bash beads. And I will do the same on the left side. 
I will take the left thread and thread it through the two beads. And tighten it. I can tighten it to the sides like this, it doesn't matter. Now I will adjust it so that the rose gold bead protrudes upwards. And now I will take either the left or right thread, it doesn't matter. I will take the right one. I will thread the bash bead. Now I will take the left thread and cross thread it through the bead. And tighten. And like this, the first flower is created. Now I want to separate the individual flowers from each other, so I will take both threads. And on each thread, I will thread one gray bead. And pull them down. Here we have a beige flower, so now I will make a pink flower. I will take a light pink bead, thread it on one thread. It doesn't matter whether it's the right or left one. I will thread the other thread again and cross thread it so that the threads cross. And tighten. And these steps will be repeated over and over. On each thread I will thread two pink beads. Now again I'll be sewing the center. I will join the threads into one and thread one rose gold bead. The threads have naturally crossed again. I will make loops on the sides again. I will thread the right thread uh, through the beads on the right side. And with the left thread, I will thread it through the beads on the left side in this way. And tighten. I will thread another pink bead. Cross. And tighten. And we have the second flower. We will continue in this manner until the end. I will thread two grey beads, one beige, cross, tighten, one on each thread, two beige beads, One rose gold on both threads. Pass the thread on the right side. Pass the thread on the left side. Thread one beige, cross thread the other thread through the bead, and tighten. I will demonstrate again on the pink flower.
So I've reached the desired length of the bracelet. It's just right. I will thread a crimp bead onto both threads. I'll put on a wire guardian, one thread on the side and the other thread on the opposite side. I'll pass the right thread through the left hole. I will pass the left thread through the right hole. Both threads uh, go through the crimp bead. We will thread uh, both threads uh, through several beads. or alternatively make a knot. I'll trim off the excess threads. I will press the bead with crimping pliers. I'll put on a crimp bead cover. I will attach a split ring. Split rings are safer than jump rings. And now I will attach the magnetic clasp. One side is done. And now I will attach the magnetic clasp to the other side as well. You can see that with these pliers, it's very easy. And it's finished. For these simple bracelets, I prefer magnetic clasps over, say, lobster clasp. Uh, I'm not a big fan of fastening bracelets with lobster clasps. I know there's a trick with a paper clay, but still, for such a simple lightweight bracelet, a magnetic clasp seems super. All right, let me know down in the comments how you like the bracelet. I would really appreciate your feedback and I will see you in the next video. Bye.